Hey, Jared here from soundguitarlessons.com. In this video, I'm going to introduce to you the bebop scale on the guitar. We're gonna do some very tangible exercises over three different chord types, how to practice it step by step, and I will also define it and make sure we really understand what the point of it is, where it comes from, why it exists. It's very different than other scales in that we can't just have a scale diagram and play any of the notes anytime we want and say, great, these are all in the scale. It's very different than that. It's almost not a scale because we're adding a chromatic note to make it the bebop scale. And that chromatic note has to land in a certain place in time for it to actually work and function in the way that it's supposed to function. So we will get into all of that. I was doing a songwriting series. If you're watching this when it came out and uh, part one was last week and I'll do part two later, just mixing it up a little bit. So today we're talking about the bebop scale. Let me define it first for you. It's quite simple. If we think of a, a scale that is in a key, usually a seven notes, and we call it a diatonic scale. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. A bebop scale adds a chromatic note between two of those notes. And the reason that we do that is not to just have an eight note scale that we can play like any other scale. It's so that we can land on chord tones on strong beats and have the off beats or the up beats be non chord tones, whether they're chromatic or in the scale doesn't really matter. We're landing on chord tones on the strong beats. So it's called the bebop scale because the bebop players in the forties and fifties of jazz history were known to use this so extensively and play a lot of very interesting chromaticism on those off beats. Um, but I don't love the term bebop scale because when we work on this, it makes it sound like we're working on the genre of bebop, which is great music and fun to work on. But really all of jazz history, uh, uses this. It's just the practice of using passing tones in a certain place in time. It's extremely powerful and beyond jazz it's used in all of Western music, uh, to make sure that chord tones are on strong beats, which is compositionally or in improvisation, just a tried and true way to make sure we are inside the harmonic pocket, so to speak. So in classical music, composers are using this all the time and it becomes much more about not just what are the right notes, but where do the notes land? Where, where should we place the notes? Okay. So as we practice this, you will really begin to understand it. So let's dive right into some hands on work on this. We're going to do a major, uh, blue, uh, not blues, bebop scale first. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. Let's review the regular A major scale first. If you need help with mapping out scales, I have videos on all scale types on how to map them out all over the fretboard. This is one of the scale forms for major. In the cage system, this can be called the E form because it is outlining kind of an E major shape like an open E shape, but up the fretboard. Okay, so play that up and down, make sure you can do that. Now we're going to outline an A major six chord. And we're gonna go one, three, five, six, one, three, five, six, one, okay? So I have videos all about outlining arpeggios like this and how to improvise with them. And I'll put that series, a uh, link to it in the description. So make sure you see this and play it up and down. All those notes are inside the scale. Okay. So now if we play the scale over an A major six chord, and by the way, we're doing major six, whether you're playing A major seven or A major six, those are interchangeable with each other. And we have to do the six chord to add a chromatic note in a placement that makes sense. So really you can treat, you should treat if you're going to use this, a major seven chord as major six, and you can always treat them one way or the other. So sometimes if I see major six chord um, in like a lead sheet or something and I'm playing over it, I'll play, I'll outline major seven because I want to hear that sound instead and they totally work over each other. So now we have our scale, major scale that the chord comes from. We have our four note chord outline, our arpeggio, which is a major six. Now we're going to add a passing tone between five and six. One, two, three, four, five passing tone six. Okay. So this passing tone is on the outside of the physical form that we're in the position that we're in. So when I'm ascending, I like to go to the left side for me, if you're a left-handed player, you're not going to have left side, but I like to be going in towards so I can slide into 
the note that I'm going towards. So on the way down, I'll actually play that same note over here, going the opposite way. And that's the way I recommend doing it. So I'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, or sorry, passing tone to six, slide into six. Okay? And then finish the scale, seven, one. And now what we've done is we have the chord tones on strong beats. One, two, three, four, one. If I counted the beats there. And then you're back on one and you can do the same thing again. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, passing tone to six, seven, one. Let's go back down. One, seven, six, passing tone to five, four, three, two, one, seven, six. Passing tone over here, slide into it. Four, three, two, one, seven, one, okay? Just make sure you can go up and down with it. The slide is very nice for the feel and it makes it easier too so you don't have to pick everything. You can do slurs in other places too, but for now just do it if you're sliding in from one side or the other of the scale. Okay, so that's really important just to be able to do that now. We don't just wanna only be able to do that. Let's break it up a little bit. This is a fantastic exercise to make sure you really get the concept. And you can already see how this placement really matters where it's being placed, right? It's between five and six, but also in time, it has to be on an upbeat or an offbeat. So where we place the notes in time really matters. And I find that working on this and trying to incorporate it into real music playing forces me to be so much more aware of what I'm playing, when and why, right? I just have much more intention about it. And it simply sounds better to me when I use it. And of course, when I use it and also want to get that sound. So. Um, let's do a little exercise where we start on any of the chord tones and just go one octave. So obviously we did it here. One, two, three, passing tone, six. Okay, from one to one. But now let's go from three to three. This is gonna make sure you really see it more than just for your hands memorizing one big thing up and down, which if you do that, you'll never be able to use it musically, right? Let's go from five to five. Right, so right away, five, passing tone to six. That was five to five. Now I'll do six to six. Six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, passing down six. Okay, I'll do one to one again. I will do three to three. Made me go up there. Let's go three to three back down. Okay, let's go one to one down. Continue five to five. Okay, three to three. Okay, one to one. Okay, uh, so that's how I want you to practice it. And now let's do it in time. So make a backing track, use a loop, go to YouTube and say A major six, all one chord, find it, make it, do whatever you want to have some music behind you. I'll do it with um, just this major six shape here. And I'll do it a little fast so you can hear how it's, it's a cool sound when it's fast and it's used when it's fast, but do it at your slow tempo to start with whatever you need. So just created a loop with a loop pedal. Now it really works to just play a scale. And what we're doing for ourselves is we're creating this kind of array of licks that aren't really licks, we didn't memorize them as licks, but we just know as kind of a vocabulary word in a way. You don't have to think of every letter of a word, you just know the word. We just are memorizing a phrase by phrase because we know just going down the scale. So long as you start at, a, at the right place in time or you land on a chord tone on a beat, you can just run the scale. So if, if we of course wanna play lyrical ideas and improvise, or if we're composing, you know, play things that are thematic and sound good to us. But if and when we want that feeling of a fill that is just a scale run, which is all over the place in certainly jazz guitar improvised music, then we have these like ready to go. It's just this box of ready-made um, lines that are, yes, they're totally perfectly linear, but I'll show you how we can break it up more in a second. So let's play over it. Right, so, or work on the whole thing first. But pretty quickly, start working on trying to just continuously play. 
Look at how, whoops, I played a wrong note, but look at how we can just um, play little portions of it and have chord tones on the beat all the time. So I'm already breaking it up into, can I play real music and then incorporate it a little bit? I went into an arpeggio there. So I'm using little bits of it and then doing other stuff, even if it's not on, it's not like a rule that we have to always play on the beats, but we want to have that habit and that feel. So it feels right. So our phrasing, even if it gets wacky, kind of naturally comes back to this place that we've worked on, which is that the, the strong notes, the strong beats, the chord tones land kind of um, in those more emphasized areas. And it makes it sound like it works. Let's move on to a dominant seventh chord. So for dominant seventh chord, we want to outline one, three, five, flat seven, one, three, five, flat seven. Go to my YouTube channel, press the little search icon and search arpeggios and you will find all my arpeggio stuff in dominant seven, whatever chord type you need. 12 different chord types I did videos on. So we want to have that arpeggio. Now for the dominant seven bebop scale or mixolydian bebop scale. Oh, let's do the mixolydian scale first. So this is the diatonic scale for dominant seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, flat seven, one. That's what mixolydian mode is. Two, three, four, five, six, flat seven, one. So major scale with the flat seven off of A. So this is A mixolydian. Okay, the bebop scale is that we pass between flat seven and one. This is a great moment to emphasize again that it is not about adding the note in. Um, so it's almost not worth having like diagrams of bebop scale unless it's very clearly saying how you use that note because you 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 don't want to treat that as an actual it's not an actual scale tone it is just a passing tone it's a chromatic passing tone and you have to use it on a weak beat going into a strong beat either direction okay that's how it has to be used let's do it one two three four five six flat seven passing tone to one so i'm not even calling it seven i'm calling it passing tone okay one two three four five six flat seven passing tone to one and i went on this side to slide into it on the other side slide into it that way. So one, two, three, two, one, passing tone, slide into it, flat seven. Showing, emphasizing how I'm using the, the same note here and here, depending on the direction that I'm going. Really feels nice. You can just rely on where you're gonna land. It takes a long time to internalize it. I'm at the very beginning stage of internalizing it for myself, for my real playing. Uh, but I'm very excited about it, so so I'm wanting to share it with you. So let's do a loop, and then dominant seven. Okay, and now let's practice it up and down. A lot of times I'll play very straight when I'm just working on the vocabulary. worried about my feel and I like a straight feel anyway and I can switch feels now and try to play real music So I'm incorporating it in little tiny places. Remember the vocabulary thing where you can go root to root, flat seven to flat seven, five to five. If I do that with the track, then I'm having these little chunks that can come into my actual playing, okay? Let's move on to uh, minor seven. And now minor seven, let's outline a minor seven uh, arpeggio. One, flat three, five, flat seven, one, flat three, five, flat seven, one, back down. And now let's do a Dorian scale with it. One, two, flat three, four, five, major six, flat seven, one, and all those 
on the way back up. This is just one of the major scale physical shapes, but we're treating this note as the root. I'll say it out loud on the way down. Flat three, two, one, flat seven, six, five, four, flat three, two, one, flat seven, six, five, four, flat three, two, one. Okay, so that is the scale itself. We did the arpeggio. Now let's add a passing tone also between flat seven and one. And that's how we will get the Dorian bebop scale or the minor seven bebop scale. Now let me say something here where if you look at say Charlie Parker and maybe I'll show examples later in this little mini series, but um, so long as the chord tones are right, those passing tones, now we're intentionally playing the non chord tones on upbeats so they can be anything. So a lot of times what I do is I will play the form I just showed you, one, two, flat three, four, five, major six, flat seven, passing tone one. But on the way down, I'll play flat six, one, passing tone, flat seven, flat six, five. And it does not matter what minor, if your minor seven chord is supposed to be Aeolian, Dorian, Phrygian, any, doesn't matter because you're playing chord tones and the other ones are just kind of leading in. Like you can do this even. I'm just doing chromatic notes below each chord tone and that's going to sound that's going to sound right harmonically because I'm going into a chord tone each time. So I'm going Dorian version on the way up, flat six to five on the way down. This is not a correct thing to do. It's just something I'm starting to work on for myself. It's very similar to how melodic minor, the true melodic minor scale is different when it's ascending, it's kind of pointing up and it's different when it's descending, it's kind of pointing down. If you don't know about that, I have a video about the melodic minor scale that explains it very clearly. So check that out. There's a link in the description. So Dorian, let's uh, record our Dorian, our uh, minor seven uh, loop here. Okay, now. I got off from the notes being on the right place. I'm doing it pretty fast just because that's what I was working on, but do it nice and slow for yourself. And remember to do that vocabulary thing one to one. Flat seven to flat seven. Five to five. Okay, so let's do it again here. Just a little bit of improvisation over it. And I will try to play, I haven't said this explicitly, but try to get to the point where you're playing real music. Do something, even if you don't like the way it sounds, try to do some phrasing, some thematic playing, stuff that is not according to these quote unquote bebop scale rules, and then incorporate little moments, little scale runs, even short ones, where you are on with the chord tones on the strong beat and the passing tones or scale other scale tones on the weak beats. I actually really liked that. So I now because this That's just a vocabulary item of its own. My hands and my brain are ready for that. So I don't have to think of, are those notes in the right place? I just knew reliably already every single chord tone is on a beat and every single other uh, note, whether it's in the scale or the passing tone is on an upbeat. And I can just rely on that and then get back to some creative, expressive kind of phrasing stuff afterwards. All of this is always if you want that sound, right? Do you want to do a scale run? Well, if you want to do scale runs occasionally, then this I'm finding for myself is uh, an amazing way to do it because we just it's like you just know it's placed in the right in the right timing every time so I'll do that lick again and then kind of play from that a little bit of blues scale So I don't have this down in every nook and cranny of the, uh, you know, where I want it to yet. So a couple of those times I tried to do it a little bit and either it didn't feel right 
like the right type of phrasing I wanted there because I was playing more sparse stuff and then just jumping into a scale didn't wasn't what I wanted. So I kind of got to playing more constant notes and then try to fit it in um, and still didn't have it down enough. But then that run from the bottom to the, or from the top to the bottom kind of felt like it fit in uh, really nicely. So hopefully this is, has been a, a good introduction to the bebop scale um, and the benefits of working on it, whether you like bebop music or not, I can't recommend this enough if you're an improviser, especially, certainly if you are interested in jazz and you're playing jazz guitar at all, but even if you just want to have this sense of knowing exactly where and why every note is placed where it is, it will help your composing and your uh, ears and other you know general musicianship and whatnot. But obviously, mostly it's in the context of jazz guitar right now, but I do hope you found that beneficial as a start. And those three chord types, even with one scale form, like we did here, can start to get the habit. And switching over to other scale forms, other places on the fretboard, um, even just with those those three chord types, will be a lot easier when kind of your brain and your body have done it in one place first. So I recommend starting there. I'm gonna do a couple more levels of this in other videos, because there's a lot more ways to work on this specifically so we're actually changing chords so we'll start doing some chord progressions next and when i do a part two of this little mini series and then we'll do it like through a whole song form and i will keep working on it in my practice time so i can share more of uh, what i'm getting out of it with you if you need to have a resource for all of your scales or all of your chord tones i'm going to recommend two resources i usually just do one but these two go together so well i have a a PDF of all of the parent scales. So if you just need to work on your scales so you have those down first, get that. There's a download link in the top of the description if you're watching on YouTube, um, it, or you can go to soundguitarlessons.com slash scales. Just has all the scales and all the positions for you to practice. Also, I have a chord tone arpeggio pack Similar thing, but with all chord tones, 12 different chord types, how to map out just the chord tones. I'll put a link in the description as well to that. So both of those things, get them if you need them as a resource. If you have those, and then you start working on the bebop scale, exactly what we talked about here, you'll be in a great place and hopefully understanding you know, where those quote unquote good notes are, the chord tones, and where you're placing the passing tones around them. Thank you so much for watching. I post a video every week and I'll see you in another one really soon. Take care.